In LangGraph, we can use conditional edges in our flow engineering to control the flow based on some conditions. In this video, we use conditional edges to build a cycle and wait until a file is created in our source folder. As soon as the source folder contains a file, the router sends the flow to the process route, where the file is processed and a log is created. So let's dive in to see how we can implement conditional edges in LangGraph. First, in our Colab environment, we create a directory called source folder. You can name it as you like. In source folder, we create a subfolder called completed. Again, you can call it as you like. After creating the required file structure, we can start running the code cells. The first step is to install and load the required libraries. This takes some time. Then we import some packages and from LangGraph we import Graph. To ensure the library is loaded, we check the version of the loaded library. Next, we assign our just created source folder to CFG source folder. Now come the next part, implementing the functions representing the nodes in our graph. The first function is check new files, which takes the source folder as input. This node checks all entries in the source folder and for each entry, it gets the full path to the entry and check if it's a file. That means the completed subfolder will be ignored. If there is a file, it will be added to our files list. Then we check how many files we have and this value will be returned by the function as a string value. In the coming videos, we will use a state in our graph and pass the list of the files to the rest of the nodes. But in this sample, we keep it simple and just pass string values between nodes. So we pass the count of the files to the next node as a string. One advantage of using Jupyter Notebook or Colab is that we can test each of our nodes individually. As there is no files in the source folder, we get zero as string when we run this node. The next function is our routing function. We get the information from the check new files node and check if the value is equal to string zero. If that is the case, that means there is no new file in the source folder and that the function returns wait. In that situation, we continue with our cycle and watch the folder for coming changes. On the other hand, if there is a file in our source folder, the information we got from the check new files node would be anything other than string zero and the routing function returns process. In this situation, we can go to the next node, which in our sample is the process new files node. So the routing function returns either wait or process and acts like an if else statement. Just to test it, we give it a value of two. And as you can see, it returns process. Then we can change the value to zero and the function returns wait as expected. The next function is our watchdog wait function. When we call this function, it calls time.sleep and pauses the execution of the flow for 10 seconds. You can change this value as you like. If you need to check the changes every minute, you can change this value to 60. The wait function must return the source folder as it is connected with an edge directly to the node check new files, which expects the source folder as an input. When we run the watchdog wait function, it waits for 10 seconds and then returns our source folder as string. Now we can go to the next function, which is the process new files function. Here we create the target path and a timestamp prefix from the current date and time. This helps us create unique target file names even when the same file name are used in the source folder on different runs. If the target directory does not exist, we create it. 
We define a counter to count the processed files before starting the loop. And then for each entry in the source path, we first check if it's the file. Then we combine the target path and the timestamp prefix and the file name to a full target file path. Next, we rename and move the file from the source folder to the target folder and count the processed files. If you need other programming steps to be done in the file content, the right place would be inside the loop and before the move statement. After the process is done, the function returns the count processed variable as a string. And this value will be passed to the log results function. We can run the function and as there is no file in the source folder at the moment, this function returns zero. The next function is a simple function. It gets the information and prints it. You can extend this function to send an email or log the information in the database. Here we keep it simple and just print the information. So when we run it with a value, it just prints it out. Now we come to the graph. Here we add the node check new files. Then we add the watchdog wait and the process new files nodes. After adding the nodes, we add our conditional edges. The first value shows from which node we come to the conditional edges. In this case, check new files. Then there is a router function that acts like an if else statement and could return process or wait. If it returns process, we go to the process new files node we defined earlier. And if it returns wait, we go to the watchdog wait node. To create a cycle, we add an edge between watchdog wait and the check new files node. To complete the other route, we add the node log results and put an edge between process new files and log results. Finally, we define the check new files node to be our entry point and the log results at the finish point of our graph. After the configuration is done, we compile the graph. Now we are ready to run the graph. Here we use the streaming functionality of the graph and pass the CFG source folder as an input. The input will be passed to the node we define as the entry point. In this case, check new files. Before running the graph, we create test1.txt and test2.txt in the source folder and then run the graph. The check new files returns two and the router is new file with return process. The process new file moves the file to completed and the log results prints two. The files are renamed and the timestamp is added as prefix. Now we can run the graph again while there is no new files in the source folder. The process files from the last run are still in the underscore completed subfolder. As expected, the underscore completed subfolder will be ignored and the flow goes in the waiting loop. When we add a new file, the routing function returns process and the file will be moved to the underscore completed subfolder. When we refresh, we see the file is renamed and in the underscore completed subfolder along with the files from the older run. Again, the timestamp ensures that the file names in the target subfolder are unique. We can test the functionality again and add another file. And sure enough, it is moved to the underscore completed subfolder. And this time we did not even need it to refresh the view. You can slightly change this graph to check new mails or new stock data or other events. In the coming videos, we will improve the graph by using state and passing more and precise information between the nodes. So stay tuned.